crawling out of town right now, headed towards the Stelvio. I'll do this as a little bit like a vlog style. We'll kind of talk about some of the tech along the way. So some of the various devices I have here on the head units, or here on the bike, sorry, from head units to power meters, to heart rate straps, to drones. And of course, we'll talk about the view along the way as we got a fire. Which sucks. You know what's funny? Is last time I went looking for the socks, just for you. But, uh, didn't happen. <laughs> I thought I packed them too. Didn't pack them. We'll see if there's Stelvio socks at the top. There we go. Climb Stelvio. Yep. You can see plenty of cyclists coming up. That's a pretty crazy car. Holy cow. Good days here. We'll catch you a little higher up on the mountain. I'd love to talk to you about all the tech, but right now, I'm mostly focused on breathing. We'll get back to tech in a bit. Okay, so I promised you as we're going up, we're gonna talk tech a bit. So, now is that time. We're gonna start off with head units because that's the front of the bike, so we'll start from there. So what I've got here is an Edge 1030 connected, uh, some maps and stuff I downloaded. This is actually a US Eng 1030, so I downloaded the three maps from OpenStreetMaps. I made my course route on Strava, imported in using the Strava routes uh, app, connect IQ app. Good to go, you can see all those switchbacks up ahead. Uh, pretty cool, the switchback numbers up there. Be cool if there was numbers here on the edge, but uh, no numbers there, so we just see the uh, number 29. Let's look at that view though back there. Isn't that incredible? Minivan, not really part of the view, but either way, let's check that out. So, continuing on, I've got an Edge 520 Plus right there as well. What that's got on it is my next head unit or my next power meter. So I've got three things recording power data here. Edge 520s are recording the uh, stages left right versus the Edge 1030 is recording the SRM pedals and then it lifts wrist over there. I've got a Phoenix 5 Plus. So just the regular Phoenix 5 Plus, not the uh, X or S edition. And it's recording the power tap wheel in the back back there. Finally, on this side, I've got a Sunto 9. So that's where I'm going to recording a climb, power tap hub data, my optical heart rate, and uh, mostly the elevation. I'm curious about elevation here to see how that does as we get up. I've let all of these units use auto calibration for altimeter data, so just kind of see where they are. I think that's most fair. We'll look at the top and see what the elevation data looks like up there. Continue riding a bit and uh, we'll check in on power meters next. So now that we're only about eight or nine percent grade, let's talk power meters. So I've got three power meters on the bike today. Up front on the pedals, uh, the SRM pedals, the new exact pedals, testing those out. Then connected to that on the crank set, I've got the Stages LR, that's the dual sided stages. And finally, in the very, very back there, I've got a PowerTap G3 hub. So for today, I kind of trust the uh, stages and the PowerTap hub, kind of proven known goods. And I'm sort of seeing how the SRM pedals work. 8%. Now we're like 10, 10, 11. Just check this out though. Pretty sweet stuff. So I've been having some problems with the pedals coming up here. I've been really having problems with the SRM pedals all along for about a month now. I'm in my second pair. I think a lot of it has to do with installation. It's just a clunky installation, which they knew going in. And I think if they install it, like it's spot on, but when I install it, even following their instructions, it's just not right like I'm pretty sure the left side is reading low right now because at the base I was like balance of 30 70 40 60 which is just simply not right and then it's slowly drifted here that is the only problem with this it's not like some of the Swiss passes and stuff are a lot quieter but uh 
So the pedals have been slowly drifting upwards to a more correct number, but still, I think the left pedal is reading low because the wattages are low below the stages. In theory, it should be higher than that, and uh, the left value seems to be lower as well. So still something going on there, not sure what. But uh, that's kind of the purpose of today's ride, check this sort of stuff out, figure it out, and uh, go back to SRM and ask them how to correct it. That's kind of like what a lot of this stuff is. And Jesus, another, oh man. I think we have, uh, I don't know how many hills, a lot. But just look over the edge here. I mean, that's just incredible down there. All the way down, past that building a hotel sort of thing down there. I mean, then you can look up there and see where we're going. Up there at the very top, there's a little building you might be able to see. That's the, uh, that's the goal, and then we'll come down a different direction, different paths on the way down. So. Okay, so two kilometers to go. We are feeling fresh after getting some photos, otherwise known as taking a break. And uh, let's talk heart rate sensors here. So. I'm testing lots of things at once. I'm testing GPS units, I'm testing heart rate sensors, power meters. I'm always testing multiple things and my ability to talk at the same time here. So what I've got from a heart rate sensor standpoint, there we go, is on me, on my chest, I have a Wahoo Ticker X, it's kind of a bit of a reference. Then on the left wrist there, I've got the Phoenix 5 Plus for optical there. On the right wrist there, I've got the Sunto 9 optical. So that optical is coming from valence cell. And then up here, right there, I've got the new Scosche 24 as well, also optical. So kind of running through all these, seeing what we get, seeing what things look like. And my suspicion is that going uphill, things will be nice and clean because it's stable, it's, it's frankly simple. Versus downhill, my guess is things will be complete and total crap. That's the way it usually is for optical going downhill. And even sometimes for chest, because of the cooling effect, especially up here, it's pretty cool. So pretty dry once we get going downhill. It's almost 20 kilometers, sorry, 20 miles, 30 kilometers of downhill. So it'll definitely be dry pretty quick. Still a couple more turns to go up here. I think we're coming up on number seven to go. We've done 48 on keeping on there we go eight coming up so you can see just that white building up there that's the top but we got eight beastly more hairpin turns to go talk series as Shane continues to freeze his ass off up here. Uh, Australian. Um, so basically, uh, let's look at the cameras now. So we talked to the very bottom head units. Uh, by the way, just in case you're curious, Shane's riding one of my Edge 520 Pluses uh, just because he wanted something to see on there and I had a collection of units, so that's what worked. Um, we would both agree though for this climb, uh, really for any climbing, we both prefer the bolts because you can see the entire course profile very easily from an elevation standpoint and you can't do that on the Edge 1030 or the 520 Plus or anything at all really. So um, it's it's kind of nice. I wish we just had, I just wish it was easier to do. Anyways, from a photography standpoint. Uh, so what I've been using is the GoPro Hero 6. Shane's got the exact same thing. Um, I'm using it on the shorty and you're using it on the top of the three-way, um, which is pretty cool. So uh, the bottom of the three-way, right? Um, so this is the three-way mount, one of my favorite mounts out there. If you haven't seen that whole video on all my accessories, GoPro accessories that I love, it's up there. Uh, but these are two of them right here. Like this is proof we actually use these. Uh, I went to save weight today because again, I want to save all the weight I can. So I, you know, use three pounds 
power meters, four head units, one drone, and everything else. But GoPro Hero 6 black um, shorty stick, so I can just go like this, I can pop it out, make a little mini tripod like this, uh, do selfie stick like this. Shane's using that as a tripod to do a time lapse, uh, so super cool again. Also Hero 6 black as well on the three way. And then I've got here the DJI Mavic Air. Uh, so shooting 4K, we're doing some really cool stuff up here uh, drone wise. And as I said, kind of on, on Shane's video as well, you know, I don't typically like to go in places that are like really scenic and use the drones, like in a touristy area. Something I just, I, I hate doing, I'm super self-conscious about it. Um, but here, that's not the problem. As you saw on the way up, all it is the whole way up is a tremendously notoriously loud motorbikes and supercars like Maseratis and everyone just like Vroom. you can hear them right now if we just were to be quiet you'll hear them in the valley down below coming up and it's just that's the least of the issues like as soon as this drone is more than 20 meters away it's completely silent so um and I'm out over there so there's no one around and stuff but uh get some really cool shots of that i brought basically two batteries i brought one in it one spare battery and then the whole thing here folds up so this just show you how small this is from a, a um, folding up standpoint so i just simply take that i turn it off i take the wheel or the uh the wheels the legs in fold it like this wrap it around wrap it around pop wrap this in there like this i could put a little protector thing on it. usually i will but for the sake of the video i won't and i just simply stick it in my back pocket um and it's as simple as that goes in there and it's all sealed up happy and it's that that's incredible and I, I used to that with the dji spark and the spark is awesome as well um and it's a little bit lighter too so like up here that would have been smart but it can't quite shoot 4k so i want to do 4k because I'm doing it for you. I'm doing it for you. 4K all the way. Um, so with that, we're both freezing. Um, I'm pretending not to be freezing, but I'm pretty damn cold. So we got some coffee, and then we're gonna go down. We've got uh, 30 kilometers downhill, 20 miles. Uh, we'll be pretty cold for the first little bit of it, and then we'll hit the valley. It'll be beautiful, and then we're gonna just be pizza. Yeah, pizza. Okay, time to head on back down. We're gonna freeze our asses off for a while. That's just the way it's gonna work. Me in particular. But, uh, down we go. this out so it makes sense when you're descending to actually show the maps because you can see right here that well you can see the switchbacks coming up and it's pretty darn handy that way so this way we can see where we are we're that little dot there we've got a gazillion things to go down uh see motorcycles all the way up all the way down just what i was talking about but this is the one case where the machines could potentially kill us if you're looking at the map here that says there's no switchback and there is You've got to be aware of that too. Yep. So they use the mapping's usually pretty good and around here it's an established area. You just have to be aware of that though. So yeah, absolutely. It works like, for me though. Like the, the stories of people following their uh, cars, GPS, stuff, ferry dogs and stuff like that. Yeah. 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 So cool. We're gonna keep on chugging and uh, just we're gonna enjoy riding. We're just a half a kilometer or so from uh, back our, our the ECR Europe like RV extravaganza thing, and so pretty awesome day. That's cannot complain there. Like you know, it's it's definitely a tough climb. There's no doubt about that. 
I wouldn't say as tough as though some of the other ones I've climbed in terms of like Alp d'Huez or others that are steeper. Um, but this one just goes on for a long time. Like it just, it's a gift that keeps on giving there. Um, so a little different, like it's all, every climb is different and uh, the altitude here is tougher as well, being a bit higher than uh, some of the other ones. So still awesome. And then the descent coming down, like how epic was that? Like all the, the green and everything was just... I can't wait to see the footage from that. That was heaps of fun. Oh yeah. So anyways, hope you found this interesting and kind of fun, a little bit different than normal. Uh, definitely hip change channel there for all sorts of other cycling goodness. And uh, thanks for watching. Whack that like button if you found this interesting or the subscribe button. Have a good one. Everybody's saying that I lost my mind.